As COVID-19 cases surge, health experts are now dealing with the new strains of the virus. It's the last thing we needed. Dr. Richard Shafu is here to explain exactly what's at risk. Doctor, good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning, Raul. Happy New Year to you. Okay, uh, as expected, the British strain already in San Diego County in the U.S. How much more contagious is this one? That's, that's basically the rub here, yeah? Yeah, so it's interesting, Raul. I mean, researchers are looking at it, and we know, you know, viruses mutate frequently. It's just a fact of life. And there is evidence that the, um, the newer strain is a bit more contagious. In fact, in the UK now, I think it represents about 60% of new cases in London alone. So there is definitely evidence that it seems to be more contagious than earlier strains. What will the vaccine do to this new strain? Will it work the same or can it mutate further to the point where the current vaccine won't work? That would be uh, that would be bad news. That would be bad news. But I, I think it's important to let the public know that that actually there is absolutely no evidence that this uh, this strain or other strains are resistant uh, to the vaccine. In fact, uh, my, my sister in law happens to be a virologist and, mm -hmm. and I talked with her about this and she said, look, you know, um, a mutation is, is a fact of life with viruses. And so if you look at uh, sequencing, genomic sequencing that's being done in like the UK and South Africa, right. where they're tracking the virus, they're seeing, you know, this is just a, a, a normal uh, change that's occurring. Now, what would have to happen in order for the, uh, the virus to be resistant to the vaccine that there'd have to be multiple mutations going on, say, at mm -hmm. the level of the spike protein, which is where the virus enters a cell. It's unlikely that that would happen uh, to any great extent. You mentioned viruses mutate. That's normal. It's a fact of life. But what about the speed with which this particular virus has mutated? Is that normal? Is that about on average? Probably it's about average. And I think what we need to understand is that, um, that it may not necessarily only be the fact that uh, the mutated form uh, may, may spread more rapidly. You know, it may be the fact that uh, this this pandemic has gone on for a long time. People are getting a little uh, uh, fatigued yeah. with it. They're they're letting their guard down. They're not social distancing. They're not wearing masks or not uh, washing their hands. Things that we talk about uh, very frequently, perhaps they're traveling more than they need to. So it's very difficult for epidemiologists to really pinpoint and say specifically it's because of this a mutant form sure. that this is responsible for increasing uh, surge. Just when we hear about that new uh, variant in, in, in England coming here, then we hear about one coming out of South Africa. What's the level of concern yes. there? So the concern there is it's very similar, Raul, to the one uh, in the UK. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, that it, it started around Mandela Bay and now it's, it's really gone throughout all of South Africa, uh, even down as far down as Cape Town in the south. So it's uh, again, it seems to be, uh, you know, researchers are feeling it may be more uh, more likely to be spread uh, and more contagious. But again, it's, it's one of many factors based on what we learned from this virus and the one in, in the London. Var it, are there extra efforts being put to contain the South Africa one or how does that work? Well, you know, there was a travel ban, as you know, in right. South Africa, and that was lifted the first of October. Uh, I don't know that in retrospect, that mm -hmm. was a great idea. Uh, because what we found was that uh, uh, although I thought it was prudent, they said, well, look, you can't travel unless you have a negative COVID test. You and I know that just because you have a negative test doesn't mean you haven't been infected. It means that there, there's a delay or a lag period. And so consequently, when they lifted the travel ban, we saw cases uh, from South Africa now spreading to many other countries, to the UK, to uh, Switzerland, to um, Australia, uh, to Japan. And so uh, the, the most important thing, I think, is really trying to reduce travel on uh, for many levels. One is because obviously if we're in airports or crowded environments being in planes. Uh, and so I think it's been more about lifting the travel ban than than any other factors. Sure. Uh, so just mentally preparing people. Are we likely to see more mutations uh, as a result of this? We are. And I think it's important for the public to understand this is just life, right? And, and most of the mutations occurred, uh, virologists would tell us, early on in this disease in the ability of the virus of the COVID-19 to actually get uh, to pass from another mammal species, mm. the bat, to the human species. And so we'll continue to see, you know, changes going on. Uh, we're seeing this epidemiologists are tracking this in certain parts of the world where we're doing uh, genetic sequencing. We're seeing that this is just 
this is going to continue. This is not something that's going to go away tomorrow. But it's not like Hollywood say, oh, it's, you know, this is a mutant, uh, uh, you know, deadly form of the virus. Yeah. It, it really isn't. Uh, it's a variation on a theme, so to speak. Yeah, it's like we're training. We don't like the word <laughs> mutant on anything, but it's glad. I'm glad. No, that, no, not I'm glad we talked to right. you. Kind of put things into perspective for us, uh, Dr. Richard Hefu. Thank you as always. Thanks. A great have a great day, Raymond. You as well.